History is filled with powerful states defeating their weaker neighbours. Yet, in 1848, in order to secure these territories, the German Confederation, excluding Austria led by the rising Prussia, sought to defeat Denmark. It did not. And given the size and power difference between the two entities, this raises a pretty obvious question. How? How did Denmark defeat Prussia and its German allies? So, as of 1848, Europe was a bit of a mess. Revolutions had spread across the continent and nationalist sentiment was on the rise. Denmark was not exempt from this and those living in the south were filled with nationalist fervour. German fervour, that was. Since they weren't Danes and no longer wished to be a part of Denmark. Fortunately for them, it looked like this was going to happen in due course because the current King of Denmark, Frederick VII, didn't have any heirs. This meant that after Frederick died, the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein and the Kingdom of Denmark would go to different rulers due to different rules of succession. As the revolution spread across Europe, there was a rumour that the King of Denmark had been overthrown in Copenhagen. And so, in Schleswig and Holstein, their leaders declared the creation of a provisional government. This government wanted to make its own laws and for Schleswig to join the German Confederation. The duchies were the richest part of Denmark and thus the king could never let them go, and so... War. The German Confederation wanted to keep Denmark out of what it saw as German business, and so it asked Prussia to protect the duchies, which it did, sending troops north. The Prussians clashed with the Danish and their forces soon advanced to here. At this point, the rest of Europe started to panic because it looked like Prussia was on the verge of conquering Denmark. This was a problem because Denmark controlled access to the Baltic Sea. Denmark wasn't able to close the straits to one great power without the help of another. However, Prussia theoretically could, which for Britain, Sweden, Norway and Russia was a problem. The British offered to mediate and send the fleet to intimidate Prussia, but the Danish said no. The Swedish sent troops to here as a warning and Russia threatened all-out war if Prussia tried to seize all of Denmark. Now, Prussia didn't want to fight a major war and so it agreed to a ceasefire in order to negotiate. The problem was that the rest of the German Confederation did not. And in 1849, Schleswig-Holstein continued the war without Prussian troops, although there were Prussian volunteers and its commander-in-chief was a Prussian too. Denmark was able to hold its own at this point and so its negotiating position was stronger, which is why it refused to agree to any changes. The Prussians were still very aware that if they got involved again it would spark a major war unless they could find allies. Their natural first choice would be Austria, but given that the Russians had just helped the Habsburgs crush a Hungarian uprising, they were in their debt. Furthermore, the German Confederation was undergoing a lot of changes itself and Prussia had championed major changes which undermined Austria's position there. These were so bad that Austrian leadership were considering invading Prussia to put an end to them, so obviously they weren't interested. This left France. President Louis Napoleon, who was just a president and wasn't planning on anything more, it's weird that you even brought it up, hinted at potentially helping if there were territorial concessions for France along the Rhine. This was obviously a no-no because Prussia saw itself as the leader of the German world, and selling some of those Germans to a foreign power to gain some more wasn't going to happen. Thus, Prussia understood that it had no future in the war which is why it pressured the rest of the German Confederation to admit defeat, which they did. As a result of negotiations, Holstein was briefly occupied by Austrian and Prussian troops, in order to ease it being handed back to Denmark, which was completed in 1852. And with that, Denmark was victorious, not through a military victory over Prussia, but a diplomatic one with the help of the rest of Europe's great powers. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Korsho Wolf, Sky Chappelle, Katoitska, Anthony Beckett, Rod D. Martin, Yudwan Wang, Marcus Arsner, Wyan Hockey, Alex Schwinn, AF Firefly, Captain Sidog, Spencer Lightfoot, Gustav Swan, The McWhopper, Shuenin, Marvin Cassow, Winston Kaywood, Spinning Three Plates, Andy McGeehee, Kamoon Yoon, Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Todd Short, Copper Tone, Maggie Patskowski, Words About Books Podcast, Jim Strunberg, Miss Izet, and Charles the First.